Today we will discuss about affinity chromatography. The team is conformed by Stephanie Hernandez, Paola Gutierrez, Astrid Hernandez, and Josue Guzman. The Great War was the first war in history in which science developed technological innovation for military purposes, as well as European industrialization grew in this century. Moreover, the 19th and 20th centuries were chosen as the most representative period in Russian science. This period was characterized by significant scientific and social political changes. Europe launched a large scale campaign to popularize science, which resulted in Russian experts being considered some of the best ones during the Soviet period. Chromatography was first developed by the Russian botanist Mikhail Swift in 1906 while he was working in Poland. He invented it during his research on plant pigments. It was developed when he produced a colorful separation of plant pigments such as chlorophyll and carotenoids through a column of calcium carbonate. However, chemists paid very little attention to Swift's published paper. Emil Starkenstein, during World War I, took advantage of his knowledge of experimental pharmacology for the new approaches to the treatment of bacillary dysentery, cholera, and epidemic typhus fever. Eventually, the first use of the idea of affinity chromatography was by Starkenstein. He demonstrated specific binding of the enzyme alpha amylase to starch as a means of purification of the enzyme in 1910. However, this method continued to slowly develop over the next 50 years. An important advancement in this later area was a report in 1967, which the cyanogen bromide method for protein and peptide immobilization was first reported. Hello everyone, my name is Paola Gutierrez, and today I'm going to explain you what is the affinity chromatography technique about. As we know, affinity chromatography separates proteins based on their specificity of ligand binding. In affinity chromatography, a ligand is chemically immobilized on the solid support, so that when the mixture is passed through the column, those molecules that have a specific affinity to bind to the ligand are retained. Components of affinity chromatography Affinity chromatography is usually carried out in the column which is filed with the supporting material or the matrix, for example, resin, ligands, and sample. The separation of affinity chromatography experiments are carried out in four different stages equilibrations, sample applications, wash, and elution. The first step is the calibration of the stationary phase to the desired additional condition. The second step is the application of the sample and washing. The goal of this step is to find desired molecule and wash of any material that has not been absorbed. Molecules that have not absorbed will flow through the porous medium, in train during the washing of the absorption buffer. In elution step, biomolecules are dissolved from the biospecific ligand in the elution buffer by a change in the composition of the buffer. Commonly, this is done by increasing the pH of the buffer. After the rest of the components are washed by an appropriate solvent, the retained molecules are removed from the support, thus achieving the purification of the original mixture. Affinity chromatography has numerous applications in different fields. It's growing importance and popularity as a tool for purification or insulation of biological agents has generated a major application in pharmaceutical, chemical, and biomedical industries. As a available tool for study of enzymes and proteins, it is frequently used for separation and quality control of biological samples.
It is also used in the field of genetic engineering for the gene therapy and gene identification. The scope of technology is contributing to the research of this technique for promising application in the field of vaccine production. This analytical tool shows favorable results in promoting large-scale commercial production of vaccines. Maintaining product quality is required to achieve the desired level of purity of vaccines. This process requires significant amounts of time and resources. However, the need of rapid vaccine development has been of a paramount importance in the world today in the fight against the COVID-19 pandemic. Despite the great benefits, the implementation of an affinity chromatography in vaccine production has very rarely been performed in the past. Due to the high cost of ligands used in this method, it is only used for specific jobs. The solution will be the development of synthetic ligands. Unfortunately, no licensed human vaccine currently use this method. However, more than 20 research groups are working on nucleate acid vaccines. One of the groups involved in this review was a team from the University of Cambria covering a range of techniques, including affinity chromatography to purify DNA plasmic for vaccines. This technique uses genetic material from the virus and the pathogen encodes a protein that causes inducing the activation of an immune response. Affinity chromatography can be divided into several categories depending on the type of ligand that is employed. Lectins are non-immune system proteins and are able to bind sugar molecules. It is the most commonly used specific purification procedure for glycoprotein. Lectin affinity chromatography is used to study Alzheimer's disease and its progression. Hey, my name is Jose and I'm going to take us on a trip to better understand how we can use lectin affinity chromatography to study Alzheimer's disease and alongside us will be our trustworthy whiteboard. Alrighty, and with that, let's get going. Our first stop will be my office. As I had mentioned previously, lectin affinity chromatography is a technique used to study Alzheimer's disease and its mechanisms and how it progresses over time. Now let's talk about the disease itself. Alzheimer's is characterized pathologically by the accumulation of senile plaques and neurofibrillary tangles. While physiologically, the disease will manifest itself in different ways, depending on who you are and the stage of where it's at, but the most common is memory and cognition loss, and the system is structured up between the ages of 30 to 60 on average. What is concerning about this disease is that during a six-year span, deaths attributed to other major diseases dropped, but the detection and deaths attributed to Alzheimer's disease went up 46%. And that is estimated that by 2050, 1 million people a year will be diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, making this a potential health crisis in the future. Due to the alarming rates of increasing Alzheimer's disease cases, attention must go to understanding this disease and its mechanism and finding a potential therapeutic treatment. And fortunately, lectin affinity chromatography can help us do that. In order to make a treatment for any disease, you must first understand the mechanism how it works. In this case, there are many hypotheses as to what may cause Alzheimer's disease, but we will focus on the A beta amyloid cascade hypothesis because it has withstood time and a pharmaceutical company has made an immunotherapy drug from this hypothesis. But we will talk about that later. And before we get to the lab to further explore this topic, I want to define what the alpha-beta amyloid cascade hypothesis states, and it is, states that the decreased clearance or increased clearance of alpha-beta amyloid will lead to the formation of these toxic polymers, and then the accumulation of those will then eventually cause neuronal dysfunction. With that information in mind, let's get going. Let's pack up our whiteboard and get to our lab. 
Hey there, welcome to my state of the art lab. Goggle up and put on a lab coat because here in the lab, safety is our number one priority. So it's only natural to wonder why there has been like big advances in the cancer field, heart disease field, right? But not as much in the Alzheimer's disease. And one of the many answers that could explain that is the microheterogeneity properties of the glycoproteins, right? Meaning that if there's a variation in the chemical structure, it might not produce any property changes, meaning it's hard to see which glycoprotein is causing these uh, accumulation of toxic oligomers. And as a result, it's a little bit hard to study. Luckily for us, we can use lectin affinity chromatography because of its selectivity. We can use the certain lectins to attach to the carbohydrate part of the glycoprotein, fractionate it, and then build up a protein from it because the amyloid precursor protein, which is the building block of our A-beta peptide, um, is supposed to be cut in certain locations, but people with Alzheimer's, it is cut at other locations. So if we can study it and understand where the cut is occurring and where it is occurring, we can then use it to try and find a treatment for it. And now that we understand why it's hard to study it and how lectin Affinity chromatography can help us. Let's head back to the office and wrap this topic up. Now that we're back in the office, let's wrap this topic up and talk about some of the positive outcomes of using affinity, lectin affinity chromatography for the development of some kind of treatments, right? So, Elan, a company, produced an active immunotherapy vaccine and it, it showed to, to slow down cognition loss. Unfortunately, it had to be removed because of the strong side effects it brought with it. Although the positive outcome was short-lived, doesn't mean that we should give up just yet. We have seen how lactin affinity chromatography has been an amazing tool in helping us build up proteomes in order to understand where the cuts are being made and maybe what enzymes are responsible for the different cuts in people with Alzheimer's. And that over time, as we build up more proteomes, our understanding will improve to the point where we can produce medicine that doesn't have severe side effects.